various types of REITs. We talk about the equity REITs. So this is when you buy units of a REIT on a publicly listed exchange and you represent an owner of that business. Um, we talked about private REITs. So you can actually have a REIT that's private, i.e. it's not listed on an exchange and it doesn't have the regulatory oversight that a publicly listed REIT does. Um, you can have public non-listed REITs that um, are registered with securities regulators, so have to um, abide by securities legisl uh, legislation, but they don't trade. And then you've also got mortgage REITs. So as opposed to owning the equity in a REIT, so being the owner or an owner of a REIT, you can actually have a REIT that invests in mortgages. So you're still an owner, but you're not benefiting from the equity income that flows through to investors. You are actually benefiting from uh, owning mortgages in the real estate area and benefiting from the interest payable on those mortgages over time. The other important factor on this slide is that you can see the size of the REIT market in um, Europe, the US, and Canada. So as you can see, Canada is less than 10% of the size of the US REIT market um, and also smaller uh, than the European market by about two thirds. So the Canadian market is pretty large and liquid at 75 to $80 billion, but smaller, not surprisingly, than you would see in the US or Europe. As I mentioned earlier, there are various types of REITs and they're classified um, differently. And as I mentioned earlier, they also behave differently. Um, because of their underlying business. So retail, this is brick and mortar retail, and these REITs can be in the form of shopping malls or the area that we prefer here at Middlefield is open air, grocery anchored, necessity-based retail. So not shopping malls, but still providing retail services. Uh, the next largest subgroup within the REIT market or real estate market is residential. So these are apartment REITs. And again, this is an area that, you know, we think really has some positive momentum behind it. You've also got infrastructure REITs, and this includes things like cell towers. So here in Canada, we can't get discrete exposure to cell tower assets because our cell towers in Canada are actually owned by our three major telecom businesses. In the US, however, those cell tower assets have been spun out into their own separate REITs. So if I like that part of the market, which I do right now, then I can go into the US market and buy cell tower REITs. You've also got healthcare REITs. So this comprises um, retirement homes, long-term care homes, um, life science businesses whose uh, buildings basically are occupied by companies in the biomedical area. And these are specific types of buildings. You've got medical office buildings whose tenants are doctors, nurses, clinics, pharmacies. Um, so that's all within this umbrella of healthcare REITs. Um, you've got office REITs, which again is one of these areas that's very challenged in this market. Um, because of a number of factors, mostly uh, this whole work from home phenomenon, which has emerged during the pandemic and is continuing today. Um, data centers. So these are a form of industrial REITs whose tenants are not a an Amazon or a logistics company. Their tenants are basically um, uh, row upon row of servers that are basically rented out to third party companies. So they are occupied by computers, very powerful, large computers. Um, then uh, people rent that space to store their data. Um, and then you've got industrial REITs, which again, data centers are a form of industrial REITs, but more traditionally, industrial REITs are these large sheds, if you will, typically on the outskirts of major cities. And their tenants, as I say, are the Amazons of the world or logistics businesses, warehouse businesses, retailers who store their merchandise uh, within those facilities. And that's a very hot part of the market. And then the smaller parts of the market are 
you know, lodging, so hotel rates, self-storage, which has been a, you know, a very um, growth-oriented part of this market for the last five years. And then you've got mortgage rates and timber rates as another uh, category. So as you can see, this is a very diversified market. And I think it's important to mention again that not each of these subgroups behaves the same under various economic conditions. So you've got some today that are doing very well and some that are really challenged for various factors, both economic as well as demographic. Uh, as, and um, as a result, in our portfolios, we can underweight or overweight these uh, sectors within our real estate funds uh, in order to capture the best risk-adjusted returns.